A report by three U.S. activist groups claims Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Twitter made billions from U.S. government contracts since 2004. Around 2.7 billion people use Facebook daily, 206 million people use Twitter daily and YouTube has 122 million active users daily. With this much reach and potential, these tech giant companies hold the power to manipulate global opinion in whoever's favor they want. All these tech giant companies are American, so there are very good chances of these companies favoring the American government. This could be because these companies are getting money for doing so, or simply because they want their users to have same perspective as them, or because government's employee work in these companies and government wants to manipulate the public opinion in its favor. According to the report, hundreds of government employees have taken positions with the same US big techs that have received huge contracts. Among them were former State Department employee Jared Cohen, who later founded Google's Jigsaw, a technology incubator that aims to explore threats to open societies. One of Jigsaw's first projects was to develop counter-terrorism tools for social media platforms. This is John Turner, earlier he worked in FBI, now he is working in YouTube as Director of Intelligence Trust and Safety. This is David Tesler, earlier he was Senior Advisor to the Under Secretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence. Now he is public policy manager on the Dangerous Organization team at Facebook. This is Nicholas Rasmussen, he worked at National Counter-Terrorism Center as a director. Now he is president of Global Internet Forum to Counter-Terrorism, which is founded by Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter and YouTube. According to a report Big Tech made huge profits from war on terror. They were awarded $44 billion in contract from the Pentagon and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. These contracts were about providing the U.S. military with digital tools, like access to crucial database, surveillance, drone technology and even pushing narrative. The report says that Facebook alone sold $350,000 worth of advertisement to promote America's federally funded extremism watch, by pushing stories on Islamic extremism trend. There are hundreds of other contracts like this. So this explains how America manipulate public opinion in its favor using these tech companies. An example of manipulating public opinion can be seen in the Russia-Ukraine war, where these tech giants blocked Russian media from their platforms, not only in Europe and America but also in India and many other countries. Meta the parent company of Facebook and Instagram came up with change in hate speech policy that would allow Facebook and Instagram users in some countries to call for violence against Russians and Russian soldiers in the context of the Ukraine invasion. According to internal emails seen by Reuters, the social media company is also temporarily allowing some posts that call for death to Russian President Vladimir Putin or Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko in countries including Russia, Ukraine and Poland. How can Meta justify these policies? It is simply a call for violence. If they don't like someone or something then they simply change policies according to their need. They decide what you can see and what you can't. They decide which violence is right and which violence is wrong. It's like watching a movie where everything happens according to the director, which in this case is Meta. In 2021 Meta suspended Donald Trump's Facebook account following his praise for people engaged in violence at the Capitol, that was really a strong message, that rules are equal for everyone. But Facebook is allowing praise of the Ukraine's Azov Regiment, which was earlier banned by Facebook itself and was designated as dangerous organization. Under the company's dangerous individuals and organizations policy, Azov was banned from its platforms, the group was placed under Facebook's Tier 1 designation, which includes terrorist groups such as ISIS. Meta says that they are allowing praise of the Azov Regiment in the context of defending Ukraine. This means if ISIS or Taliban joins the fight from Ukrainian side then they will allow praise for them too. Twitter is labeling all the posts from Russian state media, adding a warning of pro-Russian story. And Twitter is the platform which almost all countries' government and international organization use, to share information and make announcements. Now imagine what power they have, and what they can do with this. In the age of social media, information is one of the major weapons. Russia and Ukraine both tells a different story of war, both say that the other one is lying, 
But nobody knows the reality, you only know whatever they tell you, whether it's right or wrong. There is no independent observer in the conflict. And because America has the monopoly in social media platform, it makes people think that whatever the West says is correct, and if you disagree with their narrative then you are undermining Ukraine's sovereignty. This is information warfare, and whoever controls the flow of information, controls the world. If you want to learn more about the Azov Regiment of Ukraine and Neo-Nazis then go to the video in the description. Also if you found this video helpful then please give it a like, and if you are new to the channel then please consider subscribing.